Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our presentation, presentation day ceremony 2023. Um, I'm going to start by welcoming our families who have joined us today. It's risky coming out today, we get that, so we're very appreciative. Hopefully, the sun will stay behind the cloud and the rain will stay away and we'll get through unscathed. So, thank you very much to our families. I'd also like to welcome um, our staff and most importantly our students to today's ceremony. We also have some special guests that I need to welcome. The Venerable Neil Hicks, the Vicar General of the Diocese of Wangaratta, who also happens to be our School Council Chair. So, welcome Neil. Mrs Alex Monk, who is our Council Vice Chair. Thank you for coming along, Alex. Mr. Ivan McLean, who is the ASC Chief Operating Officer. Ivan has joined us all the way from Perth, so we're very appreciative of that journey. And we hope you enjoy the weather that we're putting on for you while you're here, Ivan. <laughs> um, I'd also like to welcome Dr. Graham Emmonson from the Moira Shire. Thank you for joining us, Graham. Um, and unfortunately, I'm offering an apology on behalf of the Right Reverend Clarence E. Bester, the Bishop of Wangaratta, who is poorly at the moment, so can't be with us today. I'm also going to welcome heartily a number of special guests from various local organisations, many of whom have generously contributed to donations for our awards today. Um, and we'll meet each of those guests as these awards are presented, so thank you very much. Today we celebrate those students who throughout the year have demonstrated the qualities for which Cobham AGS stands. We recognise those who have excelled academically, as well as those who have inspired us with their efforts in the arts, STEM and sporting fields. We recognise those who consistently display our values of integrity, endeavour and community. We recognise, though, that not everyone will receive an award today, and we would like to acknowledge and certainly congratulate every single student at Cobham AGS for the contribution they make to our thriving community. First, though, before we start our presentations, um, I'm delighted to welcome Ben and Harlan from Year 7, who will present an acknowledgement of country for us. Meaning, hello, my name is Han Rhodes. I am a descendant of the Yorta Yorta people across the Kamagaja, known from the Kalitha Band and the Wall of the Clans. Gopa Gakan Ganya, meaning welcome friend. Cobra Anglican Grammar School acknowledges the Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of this nation. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which our school is located and where we meet here today. We pay our respects to ancestors and elders, past, present and emerging, and extend our recognition to their descendants who are present, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and the hopes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples across the nation. We acknowledge the first Australians as the traditional custodians of this continent, whose cultures are amongst one of the oldest, the oldest living cultures in human history. Common Anglican Grammar School is committed to honouring Australian, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people people's culture and spiritual relationships to the land, water and seas, and their rich contribution to society. Gaka Yuala Nagala Yibana, Yoda Yoda Waka, meaning come walk with us the people in Yoda Yoda country. Thanks to Ben and Harlan, and thank you so much for accepting my request do that today, it's much appreciated. Okay, we are going to start our, um, oh actually, no we're not, sorry, jumping the gun. We're now going to invite Emily Orsida, who was our 2023 Captain of Anglican Identity, to lead us in an opening prayer. God of all knowledge, who opens our minds to learn and to understand. God of all creation, who opens our imaginations to build and to create. God of all hope, who opens our hearts for the world of your wildest dreams. We give thanks for the talents represented here today, for our wisdom, knowledge and understanding. We give thanks for the pride we take in our accomplishments, as individuals and as a community. We celebrate with you our success. A year completed, stories written, jobs well done. We mourn with you our failures. 
values to see one another simply for who we are. We ask all this in your name. Amen. <coughs> Thanks, Emily. Um, our first group of awards celebrates those students that have achieved academic ex excellence for their year level. Academic excellence is awarded to the student that achieves the highest results in formal specific assessments throughout the school year. These students are diligent, consistent and conscientious in their studies. They seek assistance and continuously strive to be the best they can be. I go to ask Mrs. Clark and Mr. Thompson to come forward to present our excellence awards to each year level. And as they make their way up, I would just like to advise people that students who are the recipients of our Ducks Awards from year six through to year 11 receive um, a 50% discount in their tuition fees for 2024. Uh, and in the case where there is a joint Ducks, um, it's a 25% reduction. So congratulations to these students. And we're gonna start with our smallest and perhaps our most important. For prep, can Eden Douglas come forward? For you won, George Simkin. <laughs> For you two, Frankie Ling. <laughs> For you three, Marola Wise. Mia Haywood from Year 4. <laughs> Chase Dajora for Year 5. <laughs> and Alison Orwin from Year 6. Cohort, we have Taylor Connolly from Year 7. <laughs> Bosco Sue from Year 8. <laughs> ben Koenig from Year 9. <laughs> Sean Downey from Year 10. And at year 11, we did have a joint, oh, joint winners, Jordan, Sue, and Claire Stiller. to come forward and stand beside me, please. Over the course of 2023, I've had the privilege of working alongside these fine young individuals, Cadence, Harrison, Emily, and Caitlin. From dealing with last minute changes to running sheets for assemblies, to the representation in the school community, these students have embodied the school values of integrity, endeavor, and community in all they have done. I thank them immensely for their service and wish them all the best in their future endeavors. 
going to ask the 2024 captains to come and join alongside them now, please. Today represents a formal passing of the torch to the 2024 captaincy team, but already we have seen our future school leaders in action, hosting assemblies, delivering readings at chapel services, representation at community organisations, and their recent involvement in charity and community events have been highlights so far. Whilst they are big shoes to fill, I am confident that our 2024 leadership team will continue the legacy of service and representation of their previous peers. I would like to ask Cadence and Harrison to present the badges to our 2024 school captains, Madison McDermott and Amelia Packer. And we did discuss before the presentation, we didn't want to risk a stabbing, so they're going to pin it on themselves. Uh, I'd now like to ask Emily to present the badge to our 2024 captain of Anglican identity, Nathan Gassane. And last but certainly not least, I would now like to ask Caitlin to present the badge to our Captain of Community Service, Thomas Corso. Thank you once again to the amazing service that these students have provided this school and will continue to provide this school in 2024 and beyond. Thank you, Captains. I would now like to welcome our School Council Chair, the Venerable Neil Hicks, to come forward and say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. McLean, note that. That's the most response we've had all week when I've said welcome, hello, or whatever it is I've said. Now, I've got a little bit of a slideshow today. It's the first one up there. I always think it's quite funny when they say that the, that the Chair of School Council will give a report and I think a chair giving a report. Do you reckon that's a good picture of one? Yeah. Okay. We're all warm and we've got a lot to get through and I'm going to say a lot of words but there's going to be even more on the screen. I just need to, first of all, say something about what is the school council because most of you have never even heard of it, have you? Yeah, some have, some haven't. When I was your age at school, I never knew what a school council was, and it's been a great thing to be part of the one here for the last six years. Every place has rules, and this school has rules. And the rules from the Anglican Schools Commission say that the responsibilities of the school council are around governance, strategy and oversight of the business and operations of the school to ensure that we get all things that are necessary for the running of the school, which is teaching children all sorts of things, making sure that our teaching staff and all other staff have everything they need in order to fulfil their duties. So, from the Charter, that is what are the rules for our school. I've lifted out these things. Next slide is just quickly running through. Ensuring the school's Anglican identity is promoted. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later, not in this speech, in another one. Overseeing the liturgical and religious life of the school. Ensuring that the school complies with all policies, etc. Next slide. Approving school strategic and operational plans. What you see around you in terms of the building and the play areas and all the things that are in the buildings don't just happen, people have to plan them. And they have to plan them years in advance often. So the school council works with other people to make sure that these things are got in a timely manner as they are needed and as we can manage to pay for them. Overseeing all of that is people advising us from various things such as the Anglican Schools Commission. One of our big tasks is to monitor the financial performance and position of the school and to maintain and protect all the property. 
So, they are some of the things. The list is a bit longer, but I thought I'd spare you. And there's a lot more words in there. But I thought I'd pick out some highlights from this last year of things that come under some of those headings. Anglican identity. One of the things that happened was it was strengthened with the appointment of the Reverend Victor Adams as school chaplain. Very good to have Victor here again today. Continuing to foster the relationship with St Margaret's Church. You go there for services, don't you, from time to time? Is that right? You go to St Margaret's? School finances are the most positive ever. What a great delight it is to sit on school council and have the business manager deliver the finance report and say, we're looking good, because it's been quite a while coming. The grounds and the buildings have been maintained very well. Would you agree with that? No? no. Yes? Yes? And who remembers the solar panels that were installed? Hey? Yeah. P and F have had a successful year, a year of re-establishment after the COVID crisis. Haven't we all been limping along and getting to our knees and then standing up and now maybe we'll start to run a little bit, but not today, it's too hot. We regularly review policy updates and implementation as they come through to us and as they affect the school. The school council supports Mr Willock. Sad he's not here today, isn't it? Eh? I remember four years ago when we did the interviewing for Mr Willock to be principal here, he said, I just need to tell you, I'm going to need to have a knee operation in the near future. And it's taken four years, thanks to COVID. So he's very greatly relieved, Mr McLean tells us, that this has happened and um, he'll be up and running soon, maybe. But we listen to Mr Willett's concerns and plans about the school. We give advice as it's needed. We continue to advance the development of the school master plan in concert with stakeholders and consultants. So, lastly, I want to run through some thank yous. To Joanne Burke, who acts as secretary to the school council, she keeps us informed and up to date about all the things that we need to have for discussing things and making decisions. Narelle Shreenan, her diligent and tireless work as business manager. This school would not be what it is without Narelle. We acknowledge very much our, our, her contribution and are grateful for all that she does. We thank Mr. Whitkeith Willett and for his tremendous work as principal and those who support him. We also are very, very grateful for the level of support he has amongst the staff, leadership and all here in the school. We do pray that he recovers soon and well from his surgery. We also are very grateful to the Anglican Schools Commission so much support through so many people and there are two people here today that I'm going to mention who are associated with the Anglican Schools Commission. Mr Tony Schumach who, like me, is retiring from his role in the school councils this year but who has done a tremendous job of establishing the Eastern States uh, ASC Support Office, something like that. And Mr Ivan McLean, who you will hear from later, who is Mr Peter, the Reverend Peter Lawrence's representative on the School Council for Cobram for next year. And it's great to have spent the last, the most of this week alongside Mr McLean, and I'm sure you'll enjoy having him along with you, along with you next year. Lastly, to members of council, Alex Monk, our deputy, who um, were also called Vice, Jan Stiller, John Scandrett, Gary Cleveland, and Sam Boogie, who has been our treasurer and very, an official position, and who, like me, is retiring from school council this year after six years, I think, too. Can we give thanks to Sam for her? <laughs> Lastly, I want to say thank you to the parents, the grandparents, the carers, supporters, the friends, whatever you want to call yourself, 
your interest in the nurturing of all of our young people through their participation in Cobram and Anglican Grammar School is the most significant support you can give to the school. It doesn't matter what the teaching staff or other staff do, without your support from the home, it doesn't count for very much. Thank you, and God bless you as you continue to look after the charges that you have been entrusted with. And lastly, may you all have a joyous and peaceful Christmas. Thank you. I don't have a complex that every time I stand up here I have to make the microphone a bit smaller then I'm with you, a group. Um, I'm now going to invite Mr O'Dwyer to come forward and present our Sports Awards for 2023 as Head of Sport and also as a representative from the Sporties Group who we would just like to acknowledge for their generous donations to our program throughout the year. So thanks Mr O. We're starting with an AFL award, um, and there are two recipients for these awards. They go to Sam Trembath and Isabel Haberfield. <laughs> Our athletics awards this year are for Aroha Kautai, Isabel again, and Maddie Simpson. And it is a great pleasure to announce this next award, who this group of sports women are getting quite used to receiving this award at our presentation day assembly each year, and that is our badminton um, open badminton female team consisting of Cadence, Emily, Natasha, and Caitlin. These girls have represented us for I don't know the last how many years at state. Since year seven, what an amazing effort. Well done, girls. And then we move into the realm of canoeing and our water in it there is Clive Cromer. Awards list this year. Um, we're delighted to invite Bonnie, Bonnie Beauty, Peyton, and Emily Royston to come forward to receive awards related to cheerleading. Achievement in cross country this year, we've got Sebastian Pate. And another group new to our awards for 2023 is our dance cohort. So I'd like to invite Savannah Mustica, Jet Robbins. Harlan Robbins, Lacey Eddy, Bella Met, Lyra Met, Kiana Magalotti, Scarlett Lean, Ariana Gactum, Ebony Kernigan, Tia Hyde, Casey Tremba, Janelle Tanshu, Eliza Wahoon, Ali Stillard, and Gemma Edge to come forward.
Our next award is for some outstanding success in equestrian across the year, and that goes to Charlotte Dickens. And following with some great success uh, on the golf courses this year is Cohen Hadrill. For gymnastics, uh, Jean-Marie Jonca. <laughs> and on the soccer field, Hunter McMaster and Cameron Harb. for touch football, Aroha Kautai. Uh, and we'll ask Aroha to stay nearby um, as Mr O will present Aroha with the Schools for Victoria um, Excellence Award to Aroha. Suffice to say that we are looking pretty fabulous for the launch of next year and our Sports Academy. Um, so well done to well us, all of our Sports Awards recipients. We're now going to move on to the presentation of our major awards for 2023. Um, our next set of awards will be presented by school staff and then various representatives from local organisations, as I mentioned earlier. Our first award is the Haven Legal Company Excellence in Legal Studies Award. This is donated to us by the Haven Legal Co. Uh, and it's presented to the student who has achieved the highest standard in our school for their work in legal studies. And I'd like to ask Ebony Adams, Adams from Haven to come forward. Thank you, Ebony, for joining us today, and thank you for the generous donation. A second award is the Jamalan Work-Based Excellence Award. Now, this award is donated by the Golden Murray Local Learning Employment Network Association. Um, this award recognises a student in the senior years who has either completed work experience, stru structured workplace, workplace learning, and SBAT, or volunteering. And presenting this award today is Dr. Graham Emmonson from the Moira Shire. And a very worthy recipient of this award, Madison McDermott. Watch Award and I'd like to ask Mrs Joan Smith from Neighbourhood Watch to come forward to present this award. This goes to students who have demonstrated an extraordinary commitment and service to our community uh, and this year we have a recipient in junior school and senior school and in junior school we have Hamisha Fernando and in senior school Caitlin Welch. Thank you. 
Thank you, Joe, for joining us today. Uh, our next award is the Seroptimus International Award, awarded to two female students who have shown commitment and application to their studies throughout the year. I'd like to ask Mrs. Karen Bruce to come forward to present this award to our worthy recipients. We have Zoe Vandenberg from the Junior School and Abigail Brooker from the Senior School. further Seroptimus Award uh, for Molly Packer, who is unfortunately not with us today. Um, Molly has had an excellent year in year 11. She's been working very hard and has, has inspired for great achievement in excellence across the year. So that would be for Molly. I'd like to now invite Mr. Barry Clark, who's the president of the RSL, to present the Cobbrigger RSL Awards. These awards celebrate tenacity, compassion, and consistency. And in junior school, we have William Weiser, and in senior school, we have Jet Munro. provided by the Moira Arts for All Excellence in Performing Arts and Excellence in Creative Arts. I'd like to ask Julie Cornish to come forward, representing this group, to present to our winners today. So for Excellence in the Performing Arts, and for anyone that was at our Christmas Concert a couple of weeks ago, I'm sure you'll agree this is a very worthy winner. We have Chase Boucher. And for excellence in the creative arts, we have Miley Driscoll. students who always work to the best of their ability and conduct themselves in an exemplary manner. These students show resolve and enterprise towards the successful completion of all coursework and they regularly exceed curriculum expectations. Um, and our recipients today are Amelia Packer, Jack Brown and Chase Tajora. Mr. Rob Love from the Rotary Club of Cobham to come forward. Rob is here to present 
an award today or a number of awards today to students who uphold the core values of service, diversity, integrity and leadership on behalf of the Rotary Club. And today's winners are Cadence Payne, Martin Kong, Lexi Bruce and Hayley Ledner. Hang in there. We are whipping through. 
Uh, so Mr. Thompson is going to present a couple of awards for us in a row here. The first being the Ampol Best All-Rounder Award. This award recognised qualities that include leadership, service and community, sport, arts and culture, attitude and personal conduct. And this year's most deserving winner is Harrison Brooker. to our captains down there, seeing as you've been officially relieved of your duties, feel free to take your places off. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't say that earlier. Okay, our next award is the ADF uh, Future Innovators Award. So the Australian Defence Force awarded to a student in Year 10 and Year 12. who demonstrate innovation and learning in the fields of science, technology, engineering and maths. Uh, and this year we have Saxon Alcorn and Cody Lincoln. <laughs> and a further award from the ADF is the Long Tan Leadership and Teamwork Award. This goes to students who demonstrate leadership and teamwork within both the school and the broader community and who display strong values such as doing one's best, respect for others and mateship, values considered integral to both the ADF and Australian society. Uh, and our recipients from Year 10 this year, Sean Downing and Year 12, Cadence Payne. support high achieving secondary, student, secondary students in achieving their personal best and Sean is a very worthy recipient of that this year. I'd now like to ask for the last time this is Melanie Smith to come forward to present our Academic Competitions Principals Award. This award is pre this award presented to a number of students who have achieved outstanding results in academic competitions. These students have always strived for academic excellence and pride themselves on rising to the next challenge. This year we have Elise Tatnell, Colin Pang, Emily Collins, Murray Broderick, Cedric Pang, Regan Rouse and Cody Lincoln. Throughout the year, by our crew who organise heaps of fun events, 
um, and they just act as awesome ambassadors for really promoting positive mental health in our rural and regional communities. This year, my crew were Josh Edwards, Sam Stillard, Savannah Kernigan, Olivia Thompson, and Matilda Wazer. The actor was once quoted as saying, family isn't an important thing, it's everything. And so this family wants to say a special thank you to Archbishop, Archdeacon, I never did it myself, Archdeacon X and uh, Mr. Willett in his absence and their respective teams um, for all of the hard-working staff here as well for the tireless work that they do for Cockham School and for all of you, the students. And we congratulate the school on another excellent year in its history. I also wanted to particularly thank Mr. Schumann for his enormous contributions, both in the state of Victoria and as part of the Anglican Schools Commission family as well. 
I want to thank all of you students for working hard during the year. I hope that this year, more than last, you became a little bit wiser, stronger, faster, smarter, kinder, and or happier. Congratulations to all those who have received particular acknowledgement today, but particularly congratulations to all of you who have made your own giant step forward this year. I also want to thank your families for their valued support of the work of the Anglican Schools Commission through the school. It's so important to us that what we value together in our community and schools is achieved, that you truly become people of joy and purpose and who are truly engaged as learners who do the best. Cobram has some interesting numbers in its strategic intent, so I thought I'd do a little bit of a countdown for you today. There are six values to follow. Faith, excellence, justice, respect, integrity and diversity. What a sound set of principles they are for your lives. There are five marks of mission for Anglican identity. Tell, teach, tend, transform and treasure. And that hopefully are informing your educational programs. There have been almost four years of Mr Willett's leadership and what an outstanding difference he has made to Cobble. There are three key pillars that we've seen today in use of the school. Integrity, endeavour and community. And again, what a great set of goals for you to follow. For number two, there are two very wise philosophers. You might have heard of them called Phineas and Ferb, who once said, there's 104 days of summer vacation until school comes along just to end it. So the annual problem for our generation is finding a good way to spend it. So make every minute count, jump up, jump in and seize the day, and let's make sure that in every single possible way, today is going to be a great day. So my down to number one in the countdown is there is only one hour until you start your Christmas holidays. This Christmas, make sure that every day is a great day, that you recharge your batteries, or to refresh your mind and body so that you may start 2024 full of zest. From the very big family of ASC schools, my best wishes to you all for next year. May the miracle of Christmas remind you of the greatest gift of all, God's love. And may the Lord's blessings be with you and your families. Thank you. Ivan. I'd now like to welcome uh, the Ducks of 2022, Rory Booker, to come forward and share some of his experiences of life after CAG. So come on down, Rory. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, I'll try and make it as quick as possible. Uh, first off, good afternoon students, teachers and Cobram AGS community. My name is Rory Brooker and I was the Ducks of the school in 2022. And since then, my life has been eventful to say the least. For those that don't know, I'm currently studying a Bachelor of Science at Swinburne University in Melbourne with a major in Physics and am thoroughly enjoying it. While it has taken a while to adjust to university education, I'm starting to realise the benefits of waking up at 10 in the morning to attend the only class of the day. <laughs> um, I'm planning to finish my degree in 2025, and I hope to get a job as a physicist. In terms of my personal life, the transition from country living to city living was challenging. I was lucky enough to move down with another student from my year level, which, for those that know him, realised the mistake I made. Um, either way, to move three hours away from everything and everyone you know was hard. But before long, I had made some friends, most of whom turned out to come from Echuca and Dinelipa, people who not only had similar upbringings and interests, but people close to home as well. As difficult as moving away is, knowing that everyone, nearly everyone, is in the same situation and just as awkward about meeting new people as myself, allowed me to really get to know these people, and now I felt like I'm known in my life. 
Having lived a year as a functional member of society, I feel that I should give some advice to not only those students about to undergo the same transformations, but for the younger students to look forward to. But first, a huge congrats to the year 12 to 2023. I know a lot of you tried your absolute hardest, and it definitely shows, with some of the highest ATAR scores this school has ever seen. Now, the most prominent thing about moving to the city was how convenient everything is. There was more than a few late, late night Macca's runs at four in the morning during the grueling exam period. That being said, nothing beats a home cooked meal, even if it was you who cooked it. I was lucky enough to avoid food poisoning, but eating junk food every second day didn't help. It's always cheaper to cook a meal yourself and usually more delicious. Secondly, moving away means that while you won't see your family as much, you won't see your friend or you see your friends even less. It is a sad thing to see people you've known for years disappear into the background. If not through study, then through work or traveling. I know a lot of my former classmates are working and living their own lives, and that's something you just never seem to get used to. New friends, no matter how many you get or how important they become, can never replace the lunchtime chats, general tomfoolery, and precious memories made over the last 13 years of your schooling life. Thus, I give this word of advice. Always make an effort to stay in touch and never miss a chance to meet up because you'll never know when your best friend moves away, starts a new job, or gets too busy to hang out again. Cherish those moments, as fleeting as they become. I know that life after school sounds pretty bleak, but my third lesson aims to fix this. Over the last year, I've learned that while there is a lot to be sad about, your life doesn't stop when you finish school. Even if you're working full-time or studying, make sure to live your life to the fullest. As corny as that sounds, it's the only way I could have made it through this year. I never would have met my new friends if I didn't get lost on the first day of orientation, and I'm glad I did. I never would have, sorry, I never would have chosen my degree if it weren't for the passionate teachers at this school and their constant pushing me to do my absolute best. And I'm glad I did. I would have never had such a memorable and overall amazing life to look back on now if I didn't talk to and bond with the people that I've worked, learned, struggled, laughed, loved and cried with over the last 19 years of my life. And I'm glad I did. Life isn't a bleak and boring thing to dread when school finishes. It happens in the moment. It, you live it with everything you do, and I hope that when you look back on it, regardless of how well you did, where you worked, how rich you ended up, or how popular you became, you're proud of the life you lived. Now I know that this speech is taking a tad longer than the two minutes it was meant to, but if it means that some of you fine people heading out into the world today look forward to the future that lies ahead, then I feel it's worth it. I'd like to thank you all once again for giving me some time to talk about myself, but more importantly, thank you to everyone who not only supported me and helped me to be the best person I possibly can be, but to the teachers and parents and other special individuals that do the same for every student here today especially those about to embark on their biggest journey to date. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, Rory, for coming in and taking the time to uh, share your reflections of 2023 um, and some sage words of advice for our departing year 12. So thank you. There's probably some people wondering why I didn't mention Mr. Willett's absence at the beginning of our ceremony today. Well, there is a good reason for that, because in true Mr. Willett style, he still has some words that he wants to say. So he's um, put together a little um, speech for us. Uh, so let's have a listen. Good afternoon and welcome to all who are with us here today. I begin with an acknowledgement of country. Cobram Angan Grammar School is honoured to be on the ancestral lands of the Yorta Yorta people. As we gather today for our annual presentation day, we give thanks for the custodianship of the traditional owners. We pay our respects to their elders past and present, and we extend our recognition to their descendants who are present today. 
I also express a welcome to all here today and thank Bishop Clarence Bester, the Venerable Neil Hicks, Cobham AGS Council Chair, Mrs Alex Monk, Cobham AGS Council Deputy Chair, Mrs Susanna Rashid, representing Moira Shire, and Mr Ivan McLean, Chief Operating Officer of the ASC, for their presence here today. I also welcome parents, staff, and most importantly of all, our wonderful students. And I apologise for not being present in person today. Two days ago I had surgery to replace my right knee, and this has meant that while all of you are at the presentation day ceremony, I am in hospital, but I'm getting better, and I'm in fine spirits, or at least I hope I am. I've been incredibly impressed with our students this year. I know that you have all progressed so very much with your learning and your friendship. And in most cases, we've taken advantage of the wonderful opportunities on offer at our school. I would like to express my sincere thanks and appreciation for the wonderful work of our teachers across Foundation to Year 12. I know how hard they work and how mindful they are that all of our students are challenged and supported at all times. And while I'm talking about our teachers, and while I'm usually loath to name individuals in public speeches, it's very important to acknowledge the wonderful careers of two of our retiring teachers. Mrs Melanie Smith has been teaching for 20.4 years at Cobram Anglican Grammar School. Mr Gary Smith has been teaching for 17.4 years at our school. On behalf of all of the students, teachers and families that these two wonderful educators have worked with over such a long time, both at our school and at other schools, I extend my thanks, congratulations and best wishes for long, exciting and healthy retirements. My commendation also goes to Mrs Smith for being a Melbourne supporter, but I must admit I do find it difficult to commend Mr Smith for his allegiance to Collingwood. I also thank Ms Vanessa Wanis, who is well known to many families and for her commitment and care of our students. And on behalf of all across our school community, I wish Vanessa every best outcome in the years ahead. By the way, Miss Wanis has taught at our school for 7.9 years. My thanks and appreciation are also extended to our parents and in many cases grandparents as well. I've always said that the education of a young person is a collaborative exercise between school and home. And I look forward to working with all families again next year. I also need to acknowledge the generosity, community spirit and support of the many organisations who have made awards available for our students. As a school we appreciate this support and I do want to impress upon these organisations how valued your contributions to Cobham Anglican Grammar are. Finally I extend my congratulations and a very sincere well done to all of those students who have been presented with awards today or whose names appear in the presentation day booklet. These awards do not come easily. They are the result of hard work and a commitment to being the very best you can be. To be a recipient of an award is something to which all Cobram Anglican Grammar students should aspire. I wish all a safe and healthy holiday break and trust that whether Christmas represents a significant religious event or an opportunity for special time with family and friends, that the next weeks are fulfilling, energising and spiritually rewarding. Take care, go well. And I look forward to seeing you all again in 2024. Thank you, Mr. Willett. Uh, we should have had some timing here, shouldn't we? Should have had our stopwatches on, but you did okay. I'm now going to ask uh, Mr. Ivan McLean to return to the microphone and honour or present some very significant awards honouring a number of our teachers before we finish up today. Thanks. There's a thing that's peculiar to some countries in the world and that's called long service. Like that long service is generally like seven or ten years. That's considered a long time in a workplace. But we've got three very, very special people who have worked at Cochrane for 20 years. Student, now for you, 20 years is longer than your life. 
So uh, these special people will be working here before the students for a Now that's not to make them feel tired, that's to make them feel better. That's how it's a very, very special this school is. So, uh, and in fact, a part of the ASC budget for a full time. So we have three teachers who have 20 years service with the with Edwin School Commission Schools, and they are Melanie Smith, Delwyn Hills, and Librarian Pamela Children. So thank you. So this is my other hat, stepping in for the bishop. I promise not to speak anywhere near as long as he would, and don't tell him I said that. I'm going to do it really quick. This is I'm going to do everything that I've got here, and um, and Nathan, are you ready to come up and do the the prayer? Because you can get ready. I just want to run through something about Christmas, and in relation to Anglican identity, I said earlier that I'd do something about that. Christmas is an English word which we love to do shortening. How many people know what the real name of Shep is? Shepherdon. Who knows what uh, Yarra is? Very good. So Christmas is two words put together, Christ's Mass. There you go. Anglican identity, Jesus is called the Christ. And it's pretty important when we think about and talk about Anglican identity because Jesus is both Son of God and Son of Man. This miracle, this mystery is called incarnation and that's a word that you'll hear a lot if you bother to go to church at this time of the year. I'm going to not talk about all that's there, just keep the word incarnation in your mind. And now we go through to uh, James to the one that says one of them who was a lawyer. See some words in red? Can you see some words in red? Yeah. Can you, can you read them out aloud when I get to them? Yeah. Okay, one, two. One of them who was a lawyer tested him by asking Jesus, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. Right. This is crucial to Anglican identity because Jesus taught that this was the best way to be human. Strangely enough, for his efforts, he was put to death. But he was brought back to life again, and we call that Easter. And Easter is the reason we celebrate Christmas, not the other way around. Because if Jesus hadn't risen again, we wouldn't bother celebrating his birthday. There you go. How's that? Nathan, are you ready? When Nathan's finished, can you stand? Stay standing when Nathan's finished because I've got one more thing to say. When the song of angels is still, when the star of the sky is gone, when the shepherds are back with the flocks, then the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken spirit, to feed the hungry, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all peoples, to make a little music with the heart, and to radiate the light of Christ in all that we do and in all that we say, then the work of Christmas begins. Now we're going to have a blessing. 
And there are four amens. And I want, when I do that, Mr. McLean is going to tell me I should do that, but I'm going to do that. Each one gets a little louder. Now, now the grown-ups have to help us with this, because when we get to the fourth one, you've got to not be able to hear anything about the noise. You got that? So listen. May the Father, who has loved the Eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. You're the best all week. Well done. Okay. Uh, on that note, that actually concludes our presentation. I'm getting that wrong. Presentation day ceremony for 2023. I congratulate our community on a fabulous year. I can't wait to see what wonderful experiences lay ahead for us in 2024. Thank you again for persevering through what's a pretty unpleasant um, afternoon. It is very much appreciated. And to you guys on the floor here in the room, well done. Thank you.